Alrighty, Jeep folks, here's going to be an update on that wiring that I did last night. That upgraded larger wiring that I grafted into the wiring harness, and I got rid of those little tiny wires that I showed on the previous video. Um, now, just to be clear, I'll show you exactly what I used on that. Hold on real quick, but I'll, I'll tell you, there's a huge uh, benefit to doing that that I found out today when I drove it. Okay, so here's your typical yellow 10-gauge uh, uh, butt splice here. So what I did was I just took a little uh, little paunch, or you can use a little Phillips screwdriver or anything. And you do, this is what I did. You can do it however you want. Um, I just drove the inside metal connector out of there. You just drive it out. It'll come right out. And then I just used that without the insulated part on there. And I went ahead and crimped that onto the existing wire in the loom, the, the larger side, on the um, other side where the little tiny wire was grafted. So I crimped it on, and then I put my new wire on this side, crimped it on, and I put my new uh, eyelet on there, my, my 10 gauge eyelet. But, um, and then after that, what I did is I went ahead and soldered it, you know, fluxed it and soldered it real good. So, you know, it's a correct crimped and soldered electrical connection so that's how I did that okay I just want to pull this from the trash so I could show you I think I showed it on the other video this isn't something that was made this is factory wiring on this Jeep you can disregard this that had been broken it had the green cut crusties and broke so I previously soldered it and heat shrinked it but I can assure you other than that this is all factory wiring so you see what you have on this side you have this eyelet here, okay, and then you have this little tiny wire. I don't know what size this is, but it's not very big. Um, I don't know. It might be a 14-gauge wire. It's it's pretty small, whatever it is. I don't think it's, it's labeled on there. I don't know. But anyway, here's what you have on this side. You have four wires going in there. These here, I'm going to guess, are probably, uh, I don't know, those are probably 14 gauge, maybe 12 gauge. That there could be a 10 gauge. Well, that's either a, a probably a 12 or a 10 gauge. I guess that could be a 12 gauge, and these could be 14s. But anyways doesn't matter you got four of those wires going in there and then you got this little tiny wire you know this is a you're just it's it's like a um uh it's like a resistor almost it's like totally not allowing the current the amperage to go through there that it needs some guy said these are fusible links. They they may be. I don't know. I didn't see anything in there. I don't know. I cut that open and th there was nothing in there I could see. All I saw was these four wires and this one wire. And they were like electrically, um, almost like spot welded together, you know, like electrically welded together. But there was no link in there I could have seen that could have, you know popped or anything maybe this is the fusible link this wire i have no idea but maybe back in the day 30 years ago maybe this was adequate but you know as moisture gets in there and you get this green crap and it gets in the wires and the wires start to deteriorate inside of here that you can't see um it gets really bad and it builds up resistance and it just doesn't let the current go through i mean that's pretty shitty so now i've got these properly done I got the th three of these yeah I think I got the three of those all stripped down and in, and in into one of these and then I have a uh, uh, probably yeah 10 gauge this stuff right here I went ahead and use that zip wire right there that's 10 gauge and uh, so we got three of those going to a proper 10 gauge soldered and crimped 
and then this one here because it's bigger it's got its own its own soldered crimp connection and its own 10 gauge wire and I went ahead and did that to the rest of them down there too I'll show you I didn't do it to one of them because the wires still look good but in hindsight I think I'm going to go back and do that one too because of what this did for my Jeep okay so there's those wires down there you can see this here's the 10 gauge I did it to the three of them that one right there if you can see it that's a black one I left because it appeared to be in good condition but I'm going to change that out in the future because that's got a couple pretty decent sized wires going to it too but anyway that right there um crimped soldered heat shrinked you know no water's going to get in there anymore and let me zoom in on this so you could see uh, let me find out where these wires are if you could see it here yeah that there's the wires going into the loom right here um these ones so you could see that's a decent size wire and they totally had it just shrunk down to that little tiny crap so anyways let me get to the rest of this and also, you know, I, I upgraded this wire. This is a huge upgrade here going to that where all that electrical, you know, electrical wire is going because the factory one was a little tiny thing. So I've got the carburetor dialed in pretty good on here. But I've had, uh, when you're driving, it's not under heavy acceleration. It's only under like a light acceleration, very light, because that's how I usually drive the vehicle so I get good gas mileage. I get, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. It almost felt like um, an electrical issue with the distributor to me. Like not on, not on one cylinder, but just like random. And you could hear it, you could hear it out the exhaust. You know what, idle and da 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 Every so often, just a random thing. And it just didn't sound like carburation to me. I know the carburetor is, is old on here. I know it's not going to be 100%. But it's dialed in pretty good. Fires right up. It ran. It runs better at hard acceleration. But light acceleration, it just... You know, you, you it was probably still doing it under heavy acceleration. But you just couldn't feel it like you could under the light acceleration. Um... You know, it's got a new cap, a rotor, plugs, and everything in it, and um, no vacuum leaks or anything. So, you know, I have I have a brand new carburetor for it sitting on the shelf, but I kept telling myself, you know, I, I don't want to change it yet because if I change it, I'm going to have to remove all the smog and everything, and I kind of want to keep it all original. And I think in my head, it, I just wasn't a hundred percent sure it was all carburation issues. You know, I I thought there was some type of an ignition issue going on, but I, I you know, with everything new and, and uh, you know, checking for spark and every cylinder getting spark, and, you know, there's only so much you can do with these old engines. You can't put a freaking scan tool in it and get data and, you know, uh, uh, pinpoint it exactly. I mean, you can pull the plug wire, see if it's sparking, or, you know, put one of those little things in line with the wire on the plug, and it'll show you if it's arcing, you know. But that's only going to do so much. And especially when you're driving it. I mean, it's not like you can have someone under the hood when you're driving it and see what the heck's going on. So I've always had it in the back of my mind, just like a thought. I'm not going to mess with the carburetor yet because I think there just may be something going on with the ignition system. And I didn't want to, you know, the ignition module for this thing's cheap. But I didn't want to go down and buy one and throw it on there if I didn't have to. Um... I probably will go buy one and just throw it in the back of the Jeep in case it ever goes out on a trail or something. I'll have it. You know, it's always good to do that. Just like a fuel pump. I bought an extra fuel pump. Didn't even put it on because this one's good. Just threw it in the back of the Jeep in case I ever need it one day. Same thing with the belt. It's got a good belt on it. I'll buy a new one, throw it in the back. You never know when you're going to need it. But, so anyways, these wires, just looking at them, you know, the one was all corroded out. I had to solder it, you saw there. And they, once I upgraded the battery, put the bigger wire in, I figured I'm going to run a bigger wire down there. And I started looking at those wires, and I'm like, you know what, this is bothering me. It was hard to get down there. It was hard to solder them. It's a tight spot. But I figured I'm going to do it. I'm going to get this done with just because it's bothering me. I know it's not right. If that one had corrosion in it, you know, those other ones aren't up to par. 
So after doing that, and then today starting the Jeep and driving it, that 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 little sputter, miss, whatever you want to call it, you know, duh, 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 that, that it does sometimes under light acceleration, it's gone. It's 100% gone. So that tells me the ignition system, the module, the distributor, something, coil, I don't know, something wasn't getting the proper amount of amperage it needed, voltage, amperage, whatever, pro probably both, coming from there. And by simply adding those 6 inch or 5 inch or whatever leads in there and cr uh, crimping and soldering them on has totally fixed it. So that is a choke point for your ignition system. And not only that, on the gauges inside, I might have said this in the other video too, it would show 14 volts inside. When I turned just the headlights on, that damn thing would drop under 12 volts, 12 volts. Out here at the battery, I still had a full 14.2, 14.3. So I knew it was another choke point. Like I say, I already know about the relays on the headlights, so I'm going to do that later. But the rear defroster, I turned the rear defroster on. That gauge would drop down. Um, let's see, the, uh, the heater, I turned the fan up to the number two position. That gauge would drop down. And not only would that gauge, the, the, the voltage gauge drop down, but my oil pressure, my gas gauge, they would all temperature gauge they would all go down a little bit and that tells me they weren't getting the the current it needed it wasn't getting the voltage or the amperage the current whatever you want to call it it needed by doing that it fixed it it's hardly noticeable now it doesn't have the stupid uh the the, the carburation issue i thought it had it might have been the ignition I wasn't sure that took care of everything guys i know it's a long video and i'm talking a lot but if you got one of these, I don't know about the fuel injected model. Hopefully they fixed all this crap by then. But if you've got one of these uh, YJs with the with the 258 carbureted, or you know this probably goes back to the CJs too because they had the carbureted two you know 258 too 4.2. That really doesn't matter if you have that with those little tiny wires down there, and you're capable of getting down there and cutting them off and. Uh, you know, properly crimping and soldering them. Just don't crimp them alone or just don't solder them alone. I highly recommend a physical connection and a soldered connection and then heat shrink it so that way you don't have any problems in the future. Your vehicle will run so much better. It will run way better. It's like, it, it just runs excellent now. So here's the exhaust. I used to have the sound out of it that just just sounded like it was just an ignition problem. Sounds pretty dang good now. Okay, and here's the engine running. You can see just how smooth it's running now. Now I'm not saying this is going to make it run smooth if you have a carburetor problem. But if your carburetor's good and you're getting problems or you're not sure, well, it shouldn't matter. You should do that upgrade anyway, no matter what. But you can tell it's running nice and smooth. It doesn't sound like there's any type of a, a miss or stumble or problem now. It's just totally helped me out, like 100%. Okay, here's the tack right here. You see, it's just nice and smooth not bouncing around or fluttering or anything. There's that voltage gauge there. And one more thing I want to mention I have in previous videos. This has the factory carburetor with the factory emissions all intact, all the factory wiring, the factory stepper motor, the factory computers hooked up, and the nutter bypass has not been done up to this point. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I know it's very simple to do it, but by correcting these issues, it's, it's correcting everything about the electrical system, how it operates and everything. Um, and I've been checking my gas mileage. Uh, this last tank I did, um, 
I got uh, 18 miles a gallon highway, and that was with that wires not upgraded yet. So now that I upgraded them, I just went down, I, I fueled up, I filled it all the way up, and I'm going to go 200 miles on it, on the tank. I'm going to fill back up. I'm going to try to do all highway driving again, and I'm going to calculate that fuel mileage. And I'm guessing I can probably get it up a little bit because we're now getting a uh, correct spark. So, you know, I'm not telling you what you have to do to your Jeep. I'm just trying to offer what has worked for me. And, you know, I didn't watch any videos or find any literature on this. I just, you know, it looked like it needed to be done to me and I wanted to do it. Because the last thing I want to do is get this thing off road and have one of the wires come apart or something. I mean, I do keep all extra parts for it, but... It, in my eyes, that needed to be upgraded and so much better. So hopefully this will help someone out, guys. It's totally made this like a more enjoyable vehicle to drive. All right, thanks for watching.